I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com and today I'm going to walk you through how to create a surreal honeycomb effect in Adobe Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like and even subscribe for new and exciting videos every week, five times a week. With all that, let's jump into what we have here. Today, I'm going to be covering this honeycomb skin fusion technique. So I already have my model, background, and some other details prepped and ready to go. However, you can find links to all of the images used down in the description. First things first, grab a chunk of honeycomb, setting it to soft light and around 55% opacity. You're going to use this initial piece to figure out the overall placement of your honeycomb. Once you have a good spot figured out, add a layer mask and start masking out portions of your honeycomb, blending it and shaping it. Once happy with that, duplicate the layer, keeping it set to soft light, but bring up the opacity to about 85%. All of the opacity levels will change from image to image, so just play with them as you go. Next, you are going to want to desaturate this honeycomb, turning it grayscale and then use the layer mask to define the shape of the honey even further. Mask out the areas you want to be faded or less raised, and mask in the areas you want to be more defined. You will be painting honey in the deepest, most defined uh, honeycomb chambers, so keep that in mind. We are going to duplicate the honeycomb one more time, setting the new layer to overlay and bringing the opacity down to around 60%. This layer will help us to find the most prominent honey uh, chambers. Go through each of the three layers and edit the masks as needed, aiming for a nice blended effect. Now, if you want to edit all of your masks at once, add all of your honeycomb layers into a group and add a layer mask to that group. Then mask. I recommend waiting till the very end to mask as a group as it just ends up being a bit simpler that way. And that gives us the base of our comb. Go ahead and repeat these same steps for other points of skin. Now, if you want to add honey over areas like, say, an eye, then use a layer set to normal as your final and topmost honeycomb layer. This will make it uh, appear solid, otherwise the soft light and overlay layers will end up looking transparent. Otherwise, you can change up the opacities, layer order, and even the number of layers and duplicates of the honeycomb, depending on the area um, the effect is being placed. You are going to want to keep all of your different sections in their own uh, little group. Otherwise, things will get very confusing very quickly, as we are just making duplicates of the same uh, honeycomb image, essentially. On top of that, you are going to really want to take your time on this part. And the more time you put into it, the better off it will look. With the honey all nice and embedded into our skin, we can refine the shading. Go ahead and create two new layers below your master honeycomb group. Set one to multiply and the other to a soft light. Now using a fluffy round brush set to a very low flow rate of um, 1 to 10% um, and set to a darker tone of the model skin. You can always color pick from the subject's shadows if you wanted. Paint in the shadows that would be surrounding the honeycomb areas, deepening the pockets if needed, uh, creating ridges, and enhancing the already existing shadows. You'll want to spend a lot longer on this than what I did, admittedly. Uh, focus more on bringing out shapes in the face rather than just darkening areas. For now, however, this will do just fine. because next we are going to add our honey drops. Now, how you do this part is largely up to you. I like to work backwards, kind of, starting with painting in the highlights of the little drops. However, if that makes less sense to you, switch it up. So go back into your honey uh, comb group at the very top of all the other uh, subgroups and create a new layer, keeping it set to normal. 
Now, you'll want some kind of hard brush. The default hard round brush will work, but if you have something with a bit of texture, that will work even better. I'm using this pin textured brush, for instance. Whatever brush you use, set the flow to around 50%. Uh, just for now. Keep in mind, you'll want to change this up as you go. Now, using either pure white or a light orange color, um, or switching between the two, really, paint in small little dots of highlight. Small little dots and dashes and lines. Don't overthink this. Use the eraser tool to fade away any overly harsh highlights or dim any overly bright highlights. Use the highlights to shape the honey drop. So as you're painting, kind of catch what shapes are forming naturally and lean into them. Now I am using a drawing tablet for this. However, if you don't have one, just rely more on the eraser brush tool to taper out your highlights and stop them from being overly harsh. However, at the same time, uh, you don't want them to be overly smooth or blurry, otherwise you will lose that glossy, glass-like effect. Now from there, you can start painting in some deeper shines, uh, below the highlights on a new layer. We are just going to use the same brush, but again enlarged and set to both a low flow and opacity, and set to a darker but vibrant golden orange color. You can also do this on a layer set to screen, or mix and match layers. Use as many layers as you need. Finally, define the honey drop shapes by deepening the shadows, pushing that spherical shape even further. Don't feel like you have to do this in a 1-2-3 step order. Switch between your layers, hop back and forth um, until you're happy. This really isn't an exact science, um, partly because it's simple. We're just painting in dots and lines of varying opacities and vibrancies after all. And really, that is all there is to making a surreal honeycomb effect. If you want to get a sneak peek at the beginning stages of this image, um, it went through quite an evolution, check out my top 3 tools you don't use enough in Photoshop video. I'll link it down in the description. You might pick up a new trick or two as well, who knows. With that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next, because as always, I like doing what I like, but I like doing what you like just as much. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time.